Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. We're reporting from the SDN and NFV World Congress 2017 here in The Hague in the Netherlands and I'm talking with Dan Pitt who is Senior Vice President with MEF, MEF. Dan, great to see you. Thanks great for talking to, see you to too, us. Martin. Nice to see you we, again. We meet in various parts of the world. This Don't time we we're in Holland. A good place to be. Anyway, let's talk about NFV and SDN yes. and what's happening. It's five years now since the first white paper was published. The journey has been rather longer than some people anticipated it might be. Where, where do you think we are in terms of the viability of the technology and the adoption of it by CSPs? So yes, it has been five years and it was announced at the first SDN World Congress back in 2012 in, uh, in Darmstadt in, in, in Germany. Uh, so these journeys always take longer than we anticipate. I think that's because we come in with more enthusiasm than is warranted, but without that enthusiasm, we would never continue going. So I don't mind that at all. Where have we come? I think we've come pretty far to the acceptance of the notion that you have to separate forwarding and control. You have to put things into software that were typically only in hardware. You have to put things in a data center instead of every appliance. So we've adopted the broad concepts. What we haven't quite figured out is how to instantiate them in a way that's at least somewhat compatible with the existing infrastructure and that allows us to have a lot of options as operators for how we build our future networks. Thank you. So what do you think, give us some concrete examples of what you think needs to happen to speed things up. So <coughs> the <coughs> NFV white paper laid out the architectural concepts for NFV and all the components. And what we have done is try to build products out of those architectural components. And that mapping is not direct. It should not be done that way. What we have to do, I think, to accelerate the adoption is to understand what's the right instantiation of the concepts in more integrated products that have some degree of commonality in the abstraction of the concepts and the APIs they present to the operational software. Okay, thank you. Ultimately, this whole transformation journey is about CSPs and their being able to deliver a better customer experience. How near is that to reality? Well, it's not always as near as we would like, but what we're trying to do in MEF is make it possible for the CSPs to create and offer new services incrementally as they go, putting together components that might be brand new and open source or just open and published or even proprietary that have some compatibility with their existing OSS and BSS so that you don't have to wait for the holy grail to come in five to 10 years. You can start offering some services now, learning from the concepts, learning as you go, and essentially copying the, uh, the processes of agile development into agile service creation. We've heard a lot, Dan, about orchestration. Um, what does that mean for NFV and for network transformation and for SDN? And what about, what projects are there in the pipeline, that, in the orchestration, that will help change the playing field? So orchestration is used as a term at a number of sort of architectural levels. It means to assemble resources and uh, put them together in a way that allows you to do something useful with them to some higher level software architecture. So what, what we've tried to do in MEF is offer ways, a framework in which you can compose a service out of a number of orchestrators, controllers, uh, and other network elements. And as we orchestrate these in a, in a way that creates services, that creates services, we're trying to lead to near-term revenue, not just long-term revenue. Now, I know these are sort of a, a lot of jargon in our, in our industry, but I think it's really important <coughs> to be able to understand what resources you have, what the customer actually needs, be able to change the behavior of the network in real time and enable the application to get the performance that they warrant. Okay, what about zero touch? We hear a lot about zero touch also. What does that mean in reality? Because you know, zero touch sounds zero, you don't touch anything. You know. What does it mean really? 
So it means automation, but we've used the term automation for a long time. This is a much greater degree of automation than we've talked about in the past. It's not just we're going to automate a script to configure something. It means, number one, monitoring the network and the network state to know what's going on. Two, telemetry to transmit that information back up to the control plane. Number three, analyze the information using big data, machine learning, deep learning, whatever is required to then automatically adjust the behavior of the network through remote control of SDN and NFE to change the behavior in real time to adjust to the requirements of the applications and the state of the network. So if you do this all using software and remote control, there is no human intervention, there is no touching of anything to configure something manually, and most importantly, it's not static, it's dynamic, and it happens in real time. What about silos? We were, we were talking about orchestration just now. It seems to me that a lot of the projects we hear about are in fact still embedded in silos. We haven't got this overarching network transformation yet, in, in my, as far as I can see. Do you agree with that? I do. And I think they need to incubate themselves inside silos so they're focused on making progress, yeah. but you can't deploy a network service from silos only. So what we try to do in MEF with our lifecycle service orchestration is to take what's coming out of these silos, relate them to each other, come up with common abstractions and interfaces and control mechanisms so that you can choose the silos you have, the silos can relate to each other in a way that, is, that makes sense and actually is feasible to implement and the implementation part is the challenging part. Um, and then cobble together the service based on the components that you have chosen and that are ready at that time. Can we go back to the, the, the end user, the customer, as it were, Dan? How are SDN and NFE going to help you to gain the best possible insight into current and future needs for customers? So SDN and NFE allow you to build an infrastructure that's flexible and whose behavior is controlled by software. The insight into what the customer wants happens in the interaction between that software and the customer, and that's where zero touch comes in. If you automate what the customer application requirements are, time of day needs, um, who the users are, what their you know, priorities and policies might be, then you can incorporate them into your control software automatically using SDN and NFE, change the behavior of the network to match the needs of the customer. What else do you think needs to change to ensure that you can provide customers with the best possible experience? A lot of the changes that need to be made have to do with skills and processes, Martin. <clears throat> the way a lot of the customers are set up is not that different from how a lot of the telecom service providers are set up. Sure. They have their waterfall processes, they have their established ways of doing things, the established vendor relationships and supply chains. All that is having to change and the skill sets on both sides are having to change. That takes longer to accomplish. There are certainly many efforts going on. We and MEF are, are offering more certification for skills and training with accredited training providers to help speed the transition of the people involved and then their organizations. Let's get a sound bite of, out of, a couple of sound bites out of it, right. if we can, please, Dan. Um, what has surprised you most in the five year journey so far of NFE? You're not going to like this. What has surprised me most <laughs> is that this mouthful of a term, network functions virtualization, NFV, has stuck around. I thought it wouldn't last, because it's hard to say and hard to think, and the letters are in the wrong order, but it has lasted, and I think that's because it's important. Well, it has lasted, and we're so used to it now, it's never going to change anyway, is it? It's too late. So moving on, if you can borrow the telecom TV time machine, which we guard very carefully, um, and change one thing over the past five years as you've seen NFE and SDN develop, what would it be? I would have had NFE and SDN welded at the hip from the very beginning. This notion at first that they're orthogonal, there's no dependence on each other, was a political statement. And it's hard to do NFE without SDN, hard to do proper NFV, and I'm not talking about virtualizing the artifacts of hardware-defined networking by taking an appliance and putting the appliance into its own VM. I'm talking about really integrating um, what was in a product with other functions that are necessary to create a library of software artifacts. 
And last one. I know you think about the future a lot when we've been talking about it off camera. What's your prediction for the next five years? So I think in the next five years, we're going to see quite exceptional transformation in the communication service provider space as their DNA comes to the forefront, they know what it is, and they decide where in the stratification of the industry they are going to land and be most successful. Dan Pitt, pleasure as usual. Thank you. Thank you, Martin.